Welcome back to another lesson with me, Mr. B. We just reviewed our first four literary movements of this unit. So now it's time for you to try and apply them in discussion with a classmate. All right, so for mastery check number two, this is going to be a discussion-based mastery check. How's this gonna work? Because mastery checks are usually kind of a summative assessment. So what you're gonna do after watching this instructional video, of course, so you're gonna have a discussion with someone or a group um, and you're gonna explain to each other or just have a conversation about how do these literary movements connect to the master or counter narrative? So you don't have to talk about every single one unless you really want to. You can choose which one to summarize or talk about, but whatever it is you discuss, it's gonna be 10 points for summarizing the discussion. It's gonna be another 10 points for just including the person that you worked with. And then it's gonna be another 30 points you're going to choose one literary movement from your discussion and one piece of evidence from the American Lit excerpt that you feel is representative of how that movement perpetuates the master narrative or challenges it with the counter narrative. And you can take a look at the typical rubric we look at for details on the written expectations. So down here, let's go look at a student example. I put two examples here from previous students. One way a student summarized their discussion, they wrote, Brandon said that the Enlightenment perpetuates the counter narrative because people started to think logically instead of saying their religion controlled it. The master narrative at the time would be the divine beings, and, and society told them that they controlled everything, but Enlightenment thinking said otherwise. So this person is definitely looking at how Puritanism and Enlightenment are kind of this master and counter narrative that they challenge each other. Uh, kind of trying to change the dominant narrative of that religious Christianity kind of influence and control. And then this student said, I said that transcendentalism perpetuates the counter narrative too, since it says that society corrupts you with tradition and history. In the American literature excerpt on page 13, they write that Emerson, the founder of transcendentalism, attacks the Unitarian and other churches for what he described as the re their refusal to honor, ellipses, right here, his affirmations of the near godlike powers of the creative imagination, parentheses, page 13, punctuation mark, right here. That is key if you haven't been doing that, make sure you set up your quotes properly. Transcendentalism, or Emerson, wants you to deviate from what corruptions you, and in this case, it's church. The master narrative here would be the tradition and history that the church teaches teaches you and deviating away from it and using your imagination instead of believing whatever the church tells you would be the counter narrative. It seems like the discussion kind of led in a similar direction. One student decided to look at how transcendentalism is a form of a counter narrative, especially because it's kind of talking about free thinking, of, of forming a sort of identity um, and kind of no longer being bound by the European church, which, you know, Puritans originally wanted, but they kind of still ended up with the same outcome. And transcendentalism and enlightenment is moving away from that, right? We got empirical thinking, rational thinking, reasoning, and then also people are like, I want a sense of identity. And that's kind of what uh, transcendentalism is looking at is how we're connected to the world and how Puritanism is like, nah, it's not doing that. It's kind of being stuck to God specifically. Let's look at the other example. So this looks like it was a trio that did this. Enlightenment is where people, were straying away from the church into more logical thinking, such as believing that all men have the pursuit to life, liberty, property, and many more rational thoughts. People like John Locke, Sir Isaac Newton, and many more had a big influence to enlightenment. Appreciate that they have a form of an introduction explaining what they're gonna talk about. Uh, the other group did not do that. Enlightenment perpetuates the counter narrative since you're basically challenging the Christian religion, very direct, uh, which at the time was basically all that there was to Europeans. So yeah, challenging the dominant narrative, that's a very you know, direct way to point out what the Enlightenment is doing to Puritanism or that era. This can be shown from page 18, comma, quotation mark. If I had to give them some feedback, uh, this needs to be a single quotation mark, not double quotation mark. So when you have quotation marks within your evidence, whether it's dialogue or your, or maybe they're quoting something, you have to make that single quotation marks. Not my rule, MLA formatting, which we'll kind of dive into later on. What is sometimes called the modern era, characterized principally by the gradual supplanting of religious worldviews by the scientific and philosophical ideas anchored in experiential knowledge, emerged from efforts to conceive of human existence in new terms. Parentheses, page number, 
punctuation. This shows that many people had developments in science and philosophy. It could also transition the master narrative, since people like John Locke lived in America. They, and they influenced the victory for the American Revolution. And the way of thinking influenced other people's beliefs of the Christian church, which led to the American Revolution. A little redundant, but I think what they're trying to get at is that enlightenment allowed folks to challenge this dominant narrative of Christianity for all or the indoctrination of people into religion and through the enlightenment they were able to directly challenge that and shift people away to rational thinking, empirical reasoning, blah 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 blah, so on and so forth. All right, so I hope that was a good overview of what to expect in mastery check number two. This is going to be more of a discussion based activity for you to apply your learning. If you have any questions that come up for this mastery check, try to ask three other people before me. So three before me, three before Mr. B. And if you are still confused, watch the video again or come ask me a question and I'll try to help you out. All right, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.